Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 21st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Brad did an update on what he's currently seeing with the Hanky Tor malware. Now, this malware is currently being distributed by these DocuSign emails. You probably have all seen them in the past. They're often caught by spam filters and so not a huge threat, but apparently it's still successful enough for the bad guys to continue to use them. Hankator, of course, is essentially just the first stage, the downloader that will then install additional malware on an infected host. According to Pratt's recent observations, this is often then the pony malware, which is essentially an information stealer, so collecting usernames and passwords from your system. As always, Pratt is providing indicators of compromise as well as traffic captures of an infected machine so you can reproduce some of the work yourself. And the ERP security company Onapsis is warning that about half of the companies that are using Oracle's eBusiness suite have not yet patched vulnerabilities for which updates were made available in April this year and actually as far back as April last year. Onapsis calls these vulnerabilities together payday vulnerabilities in part because of the potential financial impacts that exploiting these vulnerabilities may have. Exploiting these vulnerabilities does not require authentication and could, for example, be used to change approved electronic file transfers to send payments to the attacker's bank account, for example. And apparently, exploitation does not leave a trace, according to Onapsis. Now, Onapsis is a company that, of course, makes its living protecting organizations from these type of vulnerabilities. It should be noted that they are not seeing any exploitation in the wild. But given the age of these vulnerabilities, it's certainly urgent that you address them. The vulnerabilities have a CVSS score of 9.9, .9, kind of outlining how important they are, how devastating an exploitation could become. And again, they do not require any authentication. And Google released an update for Google Chrome now patching. This one should be much more straightforward than your ERP as Google is pretty good in automatically updating Google Chrome. What's sort of interesting is that there are two high vulnerabilities uh, being patched that affect Bluetooth. And according to the Center for Internet Security are exploitable remotely. And the National Security Agency, or NSA of all places, came out with a pretty neat sort of brief pamphlet about managing the risks from transport layer security inspection. TLS, of course, is a huge topic. Uh, teaching again this week intrusion detection. It came up a couple times how to deal with encrypted traffic. And of course, the standard method in doing so is TLS inspection, which means you typically set up a proxy in order to inspect the encrypted traffic. There's a bunch of things that can go wrong here, starting with, for example, that the proxy isn't validating the certificates correctly, all the way to insiders that may have access uh, to the proxy and with that access to decrypted data that the proxy provides. It's not the most thorough guide that I've seen about securing this scenario, but uh, pretty to the point and it outlines some of the sort of important challenges that you should consider before you implement transport layer security inspection. And NL NetLabs released a critical update for Unbound. Unbound is a 
DNS proxy that you find a lot in various small firewalls, typically Linux based firewalls. So you may see a patch for this vulnerability from your particular firewall distribution if you didn't install Unbound directly, which most people don't do. Now, while this uh, vulnerability is very severe, it does allow shellcode execution. It does have a number of different dependencies, which probably means that many installations are not vulnerable. First of all, this particular vulnerability is only exploitable if you have the IPsec mod enabled. Now, not sure how many of you have done that. And then in order to exploit this, a domain that is part of the IPsec mod whitelist has to resolve to a malicious IPsec key record. So in short, I would probably wait until a patch is available for your particular firewall. I wouldn't necessarily rush anything here just because I don't think that too many installations are really affected uh, given all these dependencies. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.